for him to lie. Amen. Huh? Well, pastor, I only tell white lies. Okay. Well, I don't care if it's small or big, it's a lie. And, and um, I'm sure everybody's lived long enough they told at least one lie. Okay, in here. But God is so set apart, he's never lied. God so holy that in the Old Testament that when the priests went in to minister into the temple, they had to wash because if they didn't wash, what happened? They would die. They would die. They had to wash. If they didn't, they were going to die. That's how set apart. That's how holy God is. Oh, God is so holy that His thoughts are higher than our thoughts and His ways are higher than his, our ways. As, as we look up, the Bible says to heaven, and as, as the heavens are higher than the earth, that's how much higher the, he, he is than us. That's how much set apart He is. God is so holy that He cannot even be charged with the thought of sin. Well, yeah. Woo! Man, it's going to make you mad how many thoughts of sin come in your mind. Or it's just somebody uh, gets in front of you, you know, uh, and drives in front of you real slow, and you're saying all kinds of nice things about them. And you're thinking all nice things about them. And just because they're in front of you driving a little slow, because you got somewhere to go. And they're, I know, I was like, don't you know I got somewhere to go? And you're in front of me, and you're driving too slow. Get off the road. I know nobody's ever said that. No. God is so holy that the devils tremble at his name. Woo! I do a little Rick Flair on you. Woo! God is so holy. Huh? Some of you know what I'm talking about. Even the thought of sin. Can't even be charged with it. God, and Pastor Wilson's already mentioned this, God is so holy that the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that He is Lord. That's how holy He is. That's how set apart He is. Every knee, every tongue is going to give glory to God. Whew. As believers and disciples in Christ. You ready for this? All right, what is your list that separates you? Okay. That's God's list. What's well, your list that separates you? Okay, somebody's got to be talking about it. You've got to be showing it to the world. You've got to have a list. Because God's holiness is on you. At least that's what we're saying. What is your list? Think about that. What separates you from the world? Look at the world. Think about the world. How chaotic, how ungodly it is. And then think in your mind what separates you. When people walk and interact with you, what is it in your life that's going to compel others to Christ? The Holy Spirit of God. Let's go on. Isaiah says this in 40, 18, and then 21, 22. To whom were you liking God? Or what likeness were you comparing to Him? God's not soap. God's not tied. God's not detergent. <laughs> Those clean you, but God cleans your soul. You can't liken God unto any clean product on the market today. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is He that setteth upon the circle of the earth. Amen. And the inhabitants thereof as just little old grasshoppers we don't even take thought of. He stretches out the heavens as a curtain and spreadeth them out as a tent to God. He takes the heavens itself and just wraps himself up and says, Whoa, a little cold, now I feel warm. That's how awesome, how set apart that God is. And though God is so infinite, though God is so magnificent, though God is so unchangeable, but yet, he still hears you. He still sees you. He still regards your very needs in life. And this awesome God that we, we sent out this new web telescope, we still can't see the end of what God created. And God's just up there laughing. <laughs> they think they're going to see the end. Ah, oh, this is good. Oh. Ecclesiastics 5.8, how does this help us out today? It says, If thou seest oppression in the, uh, of the poor... And violent, perverting the judgment and justice in the province, marvel not at the matter. For he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. 
Oh, look at the world today and the chaos and all that. And, and, and the scripture says, don't even marvel at it because it's going to happen. But there's one that's higher than everything that's going on. There's one that's in control. But though it looks like chaos, God is in control. Yes, sir. That's how it's set apart. They think that it's like, okay, we're doing what we're going to do. We're going to... God's got it. But here's a question. Here's a big question with a lot of question marks over it or behind it. How can you connect with this holy God? How can you connect with the holy God? You ready? You ready? I'm getting ready to set myself, separate. I'm going to step back. You got to keep your distance from the world. That's the first thing you got to do. You got to keep your distance from the world. And then once that, you got to draw nigh to God. You got to get a little closer to God. That's the first thing you want to put in your notes. You got to separate yourself from this world. And God, that this process, the system of this world is not of God. Amen. See, the closer you get to this world, your mind gets all lost in the sauce, don't it? You start thinking things, you start acting ways, you start doing things like, wow, I'm doing that? That happened to me? Really? I tell you what, you get in the wrong crowd, and that crowd influences you, you're going to end up in places you never thought you would go in your entire life. Anybody ever been there? Yeah, that's happened. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then the more you are in, the, get your mind lost in the sauce of the world, your heart gets overcharged. Has your heart ever been overcharged? It's like you can, you can overcharge things, you know that? You can break things if you overcharge them. It, 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 you know, you can be overcharged with the world. It could get in you so much that you lose your mind. You lose your direction and you lose what God meant for you to be. Oh, here's one. You got your, uh, everybody got a cell phone? Oh, yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, intermission here, if your cell phone isn't on silent, please put it on silent mode. <laughs> Turn the ringer down. Okay. But I want to share with this. Don't turn your whistles and bells to silent mode when it comes to detecting uh, the sin around you. You know, you can turn, everybody's in that. You just turn, when I'm at home and, and, and it's been a long day, I want to relax and I'm laying on the couch and I, I turn around nice, you know, the old sci-fi movie, I got my little drink and I turn my phone, make sure it's on silent. <laughs> you know, because you don't want to be disturbed. You know what I mean? Oh, we never done that, Pastor. I always have my phone on so the church can call me and I can be ready at any time in any moment. Now, come on. Don't turn it. So when you get, when you get close, you, you know how you can turn your phone and vibrate? You ever done that? You get close, it's in. It's, 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 oh, okay, that's in. Oh, you know, like, bling, 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 that's in. What's that? What's that? A noise. Yeah, God's trying to tell you, don't turn your life on silent mode when it comes to detecting sin in this life because you need warnings. You need warnings. We all have, how many appreciate those warning signs on the road when you're going down the road? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's another one, the National Weather Service. What do they do? They put out these alerts, don't they? These are notes of hurricanes, uh, tornadoes, fires, uh, other things. They, they, they send them out. Well, if you got your uh, phone turned off, you're not going to get the alert. You're not going to know a storm is coming. And recently we've seen all over the news how violent storms are. What, what recently, unfortunately, the fire in um, Hawaii, uh, the hurricanes, the tornadoes just ripping through, those are violent. They destroy, they rip apart. Totally flatten, destroy lives, kill lives. And I'm encouraging this. Don't turn your, uh, your detector on silent mode when it comes to sin because sin was going to destroy you. It will flatten you. It will take you out. It will change who God meant for you to be. Amen? Protect yourself. Oh, because we need to hear when the storm is coming. We need to know when sin is encroaching, or how you said it, encroaching? Yeah, encroaching on us, on our holiness. Well, many depend on, at least I do. I just recently made a long trip. How many depend on GPS when you're traveling? Okay, well, some hands are not up, but I'm assuming you do. How many remembers the day uh, <coughs> that, well, how many remembers, uh, or probably right now, you can't even imagine uh, traveling without GPS? You've always had GPS. Okay. Now, who remembers the big old map books in your car? Oh, yeah. When you're traveling without your GPS, 
Uh, and then sometimes we didn't have one. I can't tell you how many times I stopped in at a 7-Eleven, Wawa, or not it was Wawa, but those little convenience stores, you know what I mean, to stop in. And you didn't buy anything. I'm just going to look at a mat. <laughs> okay, now I know where I'm at. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm asking us today to make sure that uh, you install that, well, that holiness app down in, uh, on, in your life. Okay, install it. Okay, God, I, I didn't see it on Amazon. I didn't see it. Well, it's not there. It's, 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 it's in God's holy book. Okay, and you got to download it by what? Reading it, studying it. You got you to gotta eat it. You gotta, that's how you download it. I mean, because there is a path. And God wants you on that path, and there's a destination, and God wants you to get to that destination. What's that destination? Anybody know? Heaven. Amen. What's that path? The path of righteousness. Yeah, straight and narrow. Somebody say straight and narrow. You're right. Okay, so Isaiah. So I want to give us just a little bit of glimpse, just a tiny little glimpse of, of what God's glory might look like. Can we see that? Yeah, Isaiah gave us just a tiny little glimpse. You ready for it? Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, this is Isaiah, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, but the throne was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Carol, you might be familiar with this. A train is that beautiful part of the garment on the back. And when Carol was walking in her eye, it just filled the whole aisle with the little red uh, uh, flowers and all that. It was beautiful, and she was beautiful, and it just filled. The, and I'm like, oh, wow. Where God's train filled the sanctuary, it filled heaven. That's how blowing. And he had a throne, and he says his throne was high and lifted up above all thrones. Oh, above lords and lords, above kings, above any providence. God is lifted up. That's how holy he is. Woo! And above it, we're not done, folks. And above it stood the serpents. This is the only place in the Bible to talk about this angel serpents. The only place. And, and these serpents, I've got to read it because I just want to talk, but I'm going to read it. Each one had six wings, which twain covered his face, and, and, and with twain covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Oh, my goodness. These angels, these serpents, these special angels ministering to the God, their wings covered their face. They couldn't even look at God. He was so holy. That his presence just they had to cover their eyes. Their feet were so impure they had to cover their feet. And these are angels. And then with two, they did fly. Was that it? No, they cried, Holy, holy, holy. They raised God's holiness to the third degree. What do we do when we want to emphasize something? Like me, I kind of make it louder. Or, or, or you say it more than once. Or you write something, you underline and put it in bold. You put little brackets around it. You do something to emphasize it. How can you emphasize the holiness of God? Only angels could do that and said, holy, holy, holy to God. Wow. I'm just trying to give us a little small picture. And this is going to help us. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, even inanimate objects. God was so holy that he came through here. The bricks were just moved. The foundations of your chairs would shake if the pure holiness of God rushed through this sanctuary. Then said I, woe is me. The only place in the Scriptures where the prophet pronounced woe upon himself. He says, woe is me. And when I was in the sanctuary preparing and studying, I was standing before God and says, woe is me, how sinful I am. Even in my best state, even in our best state, how I'm pure and how sinful are we still? Hmm. I'm undone, he said. My clips are unclean and I draw in the midst of unclean people. Verse 6, then flew one of the serpents and he having live coal in his hand which he had taken from the tongue from off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and he said, Lo, this has touched thy lips and thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin is purged. And I also heard the voice saying, Whom shall I send? He said, I'm going to go. This is a major point. Because Isaiah said, woe is me. He declared himself unclean he, before the presence of God, before the throne, his vision. But the angel says, he took the call and put it on his lips. He says, now you're clean. 
Now you go and speak. We have to connect with God to get this holiness. We have to touch Him. We have to embrace it. We have to, this holiness has to touch you to be holy. Can I hear an amen? amen. Can I, is this true? We, this holiness has to touch us. Genesis 127 says that God created man in His own image. In the image of God created He Him, male and female created He them. Oh, I want to give us an example of a car engine. It was designed for a specific function. Uh, it was designed, and the car engine is really complicated once you really start studying it, and, and from the infinite, from the thought of somebody's mind to seeing it work. But guess what? If you put some bad fuel in that, if you put something in there that isn't designed for it, it's not going to work. It's going to break. That engine, is this not true, Pastor Taylor? You put something in the engine that it's not supposed to, it's going to break. Because it wasn't designed for any, uh, but for a specific design or, or fuel. Well, if you put anything less in your life than what God designed, this world or, or, or idea of what you think is right, there's a way that seems right, whatever you put, it isn't the design. We're going to break. That's why the world is broken. That's why the world is in sin, because they're putting stuff in there that God never designed. Remember, you were created in the image of God. And we just looked at a little snippet of the holiness of God. And yet, God says, be you holy as I'm holy. Amazing. I want to use a couple of examples uh, today. If we can have the ushers, let's give our ushers a warm welcome as they help us. Okay. So they're going to bring the table up here, and then I'm going to need a volunteer. Um, Jay, you look, uh, you look like a good volunteer. That's what you get for sitting on the front row, brother. Okay. So uh, be careful, guys. All right, there you go. Long waist, long waist. Okay, that will work. I think, yeah, that will work. So uh, I'm having to bring it up here just for visual for those online and everything. I, I think this will work. Jay, if you can help me here, let's, let's kind of bring this stuff out here, the bag. Okay. You see, what is all this? Uh, okay, junk. No, this is not junk. This is very important. Okay. You want to take that out of the bag? So we got a couple examples here this morning I think might help us out. Okay, so we're going to put that one over here. And that one over here. So in order to help me out, I'm going to need you to hold this mic. Can you do that? And then somewhere in your, Thank you. Okay. Okay, Jay, so you look thirsty. Does Jay look thirsty? Yeah. Let's, help, let's help him out. Jay, Jay looks thirsty. Okay, Jay, so Jay, what I'm going to do is this is some nice, fresh... Uh, this is God's soft drink. Okay, this is the best soft drink you're ever going to drink. Uh, okay. Clean glass, right? A clean, this is a nice, clean cup, and it was designed for, you know, liquid to drink, you know. So, Jay, you look thirsty, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, pour some water in here for you, and, uh, and I'll take that back. I'm going to let you... Um, hmm. yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay, go ahead. Wow, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was great. Man, don't you feel better now? I do. You, you, okay. So, but Jay, uh, you still, uh, I think you might still be a little bit thirsty. So you're going to have to help me out, okay? So now I've got this cup. Looks like uh, detergent, but it's not. It's it's blue. But it's it's actually engine oil, or or two cycle oil. So, but what I'm going to do was well, this cup meant for really two cycle engine oil? N not not really. No, it wasn't. Okay, but I'm going to help you out, Jay. So I'm going to put this rag in here, and I'm going to need that other bag too. And that I don't know what you do with it. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here, folks? I'm, I'm cleaning this out. This cup really wasn't meant for this two-cycle oil, but somebody actually put it in there. I don't know why they would do that. Nobody would go in your kitchen and get a nice pot from your wife's collection and go and drain your oil in it. I know nobody would ever do that. Never. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I think you're still thirsty, so I'm going to pour some water in here. And Jay, uh, I'm going to offer you some more water, brother. No, thanks. Come on, man, this is God's soft drink, and you don't want to drink it? Help him out. Does, should Jay drink this water? No. Well, why shouldn't... Huh? No? Did I hear somebody say yes? 
<laughs> then won't you come up and demonstrate for us? Okay. Okay. Jay, why don't you drink in the water? It's, it's got stuff in there that's probably carcinogens. I don't want to get uh, Okay. Uh, okay. So we could say it was polluted, can't we? Yeah, it's contaminated. It's contaminated. It's, so uh, I want to use these two examples to help put in our mind of how unuseful something is once it gets contaminated, once it gets polluted. Think about your life. God created you in the image of Him, but yet we go and pollute ourselves. Now, you can have all the freedom to put in your life what you want to put in there. Just like somebody put motor oil in there. Okay, or two sides. You can do it. That's your freedom. That's, you know, but it gets polluted. Okay, so I'll hold this. One more example. Okay, toothpaste. Hmm. Okay, so Jay, I'm going to need you to open that toothbrush. Okay. I know nobody's ever done this one. This is a weird one. Oh, no, that's... Okay, a little... You need a scissors, that is a soft toothbrush, man. That is a almost a $20 toothbrush, and you're complaining about it? Oh, come on, dude. Yeah, there you go. Okay, there you go. So I, I think uh, if you didn't brush your teeth, it'd be a good uh, chance to do it now. Okay, well, why don't you, uh, brand new teeth brush, why don't you demonstrate for us how to use a toothbrush? Okay. Awesome. That's good. Is he doing it right? Okay, awesome. Well, anybody ever do this? Need you to hold this again? I know nobody's ever done this. You, you know, you have a shoe. How do you get along those edges? Anybody? Well, I'll tell you what, this is how you do it, in case you've never done this before. If you didn't come in, if one of those little brushes and you come, you take a toothbrush. And you go along it like this. See that? Are you guys learning anything? He says, no, not really, Pastor. It's good for the edge, too. Yeah, it's, uh, see? It really works. You ever, and, then, and then you buff it out. Okay? So, um, what I'm going to do, Jay, now is I'm going to clean off the toothbrush. <laughs> okay? Because I know you didn't finish brushing your teeth. And then I'm going to take Sensodyne. This is, I get this at uh, uh, orthodontics, this is like $20 almost. This stuff's expensive. So I'm going to put some toothpaste on there. And now, Jay, I want to offer you an opportunity to brush your teeth again. I'm going to decline. Come on, man. That's $20 toothpaste. That's the best toothpaste they make. Uh, well, you know what? I'm sorry. You're no? Okay. Should he brush his teeth with this? No, exactly. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's just a couple examples. Thank you, Jay. Let's give Jay a warm welcome. Ushers, ushers, if you could take this away. Come on up, ushers. Let's take this away. Do you get that picture in your mind of how ungodly, how, how unusable something is once it's polluted? Well, if, if you drop your uh, tooth, come on up, ushers. If you drop your uh, toothpick, are you going to use your toothpick again? But think about in your mind some of the things you, you, that you wouldn't use if you dropped. You dropped some stuff, and you said, no way, I'm not going to use that. No more. Thank you, guys. Let's give them a warm welcome. Yeah. So I just wanted to give us that little glimpse, because sometimes we learn that way. How there's, you would never think about... Uh, you know, when I have a toothbrush, as soon as it falls on the ground, I'm sorry, it's going in the garbage. Uh, it could be any floor. I don't care. As soon as I drop it, it's going in the garbage. You know, the, the, uh, my water, my lid, okay, the lid on your water bottles, as soon as I drop that on the floor, forget it. It's not going back on my, uh, my bottle. Uh, I'm going to finish drinking that and throw that bottle away. But if it's not, sometimes I fill it back up. So you, you get that idea. So, you know, I, I'm a maintenance worker, so... I will put gloves on, plastic gloves, and then also uh, the hard gloves. And then when I'm working on something, I can just grab a hold of it. It's greasy. It's dirty. It's okay. Because I can take those gloves off, and then my hands are nice and clean and shiny. Anybody's ever been there? Uh, ladies, you're working, you know, maybe in the garden, you do the same thing. Well, you, you keep your hands clean and shiny because they're covered. Well, that's what holiness is going to do. It's going, if you have it on it, it's going to protect you. That's what it's meant to do. You can go out in the world and be what? Not of the world because you have this holiness on your life. That's why God wants to give it to you, to protect you, to keep you squeaky clean, okay, in his presence. So holiness, uh, guys, uh, is kind of like a saw blade. Okay, or well, a skill saw has a protector on it, don't it? Oh, yeah. um, and also, if you use a table saw, well, those are on there to protect your fingers from getting cut off. So you could do your project and still have all your fingers at the end of the project. 
Well, that's what holiness is. It's that protector in your life. Amen? Okay, let's go on. Holiness shouldn't be a grudgingly task. Woo, time's getting short here. Grudgingly shouldn't be a, a grudgingly task. I know how grudgingly it was for you guys to get paid this week. I know how much is like, oh, they're paying me again. I just got paid two weeks ago. And they're paying me again, Paris. Can you believe that? Oh, go, 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 go ahead. Go on. Give me the paycheck. I'll take it. I'll put it in my bank account. Holiness shouldn't be something that's grudgingly. You should really want to understand the value of it. And then once you understand the value of it, it's like, and you put it into your life, and it becomes that spiritual bank account. You start growing. You you feel confident. You can go out in the world and, and kind of like you got your Superman suit on. Yeah, I'm okay now. I got my cape. I got my I got my little mask. It, it gives you a confidence that you can be in the world and, and and minister and not get stained by it. So much to talk about. Influence of sin. Woo, man! Like bombard you like meteorites. Sin on every, every media, radio, TV, uh, what else? Um, uh, the writings, your books and stuff, just uh, this, this barbarment of sin. It is, and even cartoons. They can't even keep cartoons clean. Come on. You know what I mean? They can't even keep cartoons. They've got to dress them like with no clothes on. I'm like, really? That's why each and every day we must choose Church, we must choose to ignore, to resist, or to even mortify. You know, some things you can ignore in life. Is there things you ignore in life? Yeah, because you have that strength. You, you, you have that confidence. It's like, yeah, that's not even phasing me. But then sometimes you walk in life and, uh, and you see something, and it, you slow down, and it's like, oh, it's like your neck is twisting. It's like, you see what I mean? It's like, some things are a little bit harder, aren't they? Some things get on. Some things attract you, so you got to resist. And then other things, my brothers and sisters, you got to mortify. You got to kill it out of your life because if you don't kill sin out of your life, it's going to kill you. If you don't bury sin, it's going to bury you. You got to dig a hole and bury that ungodliness and the things that's causing this holiness of God to be compromised in your life. Go on. But the beautiful thing about it, God is holy. And because He's so holy, He wants to give you a way of an escape. He wants to give you a way. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, what does it say? That we have a way of escape. There is no temptation taking you, but such as common to man, that God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with that temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. We're never going to be able to say, God, God, there was, there was no way out but to sin. God is like, what? What did you just say? How easy would have been for Daniel just to not pray. But he ended up in the lion's den. And God still delivered him. How easy would it have been for Shabbat, Meshach, and Bingo just to worship that idol? But they didn't. And God is encouraging us, there is a way out. There, there is a way out. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Brother Tanner testified to it today. There is a way out. Baptism in Jesus' name. We have to connect. We have to touch holiness. You can't be holy unless holiness touches you and gets in your life. That's, right. That's the problem with the world. They're proclaiming self-righteousness, self Holiness, I can do this on my own. The Bible says, and Jesus says, the disciple says, you can't do it on your own. You have to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. If you're determined, in other words, you have, you have to fall in love with holiness. You have to Fall in love with it. You, you have to consider yourself naked without it. You're not leaving your home in your underwear and it's like, ah, oh, you know, it's like, this is what I just do. No, you don't. You get dressed. 
because the rest of society says that's not that's not what we do and god is saying that's not you know if you're not dressed without holiness god is saying that's not what this is not what i'm about this is not what i do be determined and that that if you're determined in that frame of mind then you're going to run towards god's ways you you're going to see god and you're going to run as fast as you can you're going to embrace god well then once you do that then i don't care what the devil throws at you the gates of hell my brothers and sisters will never prevail against you whatever the devil throws at you you're going to be as paul says i am more than a conqueror in christ jesus because i got my armor on i got my helmet of salvation that my feet is shod I'm, i got my shield and sword and i got the holiness of god the righteousness and whatever the devil throws is just going to bounce off but without it without it we are very vulnerable there's a highway the bible says of righteousness Well, I haven't touched the notes yet. <laughs> but I think God is doing something here. This is what I want to do. This is how I want to end it. If you always have the mindset of who you belong to, okay, who you are and what your purpose and God's purpose is for your life, you're going to yield to God, are you not? So I want to give the church some call words, actions when it comes to maintaining holiness. Abstain. Abstain from even the appearance of evil. The second call word. Build on. Build on your, Bible says, most holy faith. Really? Really? Just not a faith, your most holy faith. Build on. Your third call word, touch not. Touch not the unclean thing. Amen. Fourth one, good conscience. You need to have a good conscience. God has given in this life, things to help us. He's given us conviction. He's given us shame. He's given us a conscience to know where we're at between Him and us. Amen. He's given you those things. Use them. Don't ignore them. Because the Bible says if you ignore them, your heart would become like iron. Your mind would become sheared. Fifth call word, deny Deny ungodliness and worldly lust. And we talked about the three phases that sometimes you can ignore. And then you got to go a step up and sometimes you have to resist. And then sometimes you just got to get the old sickle out and just cut it down. Amen. Amen. The next call word, walk in the Spirit that you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. The next call word, be not entangled. Some understand this word about entangled, that their life and what they're a part of is so entangled that they don't feel they can get out. And, and I want to share with you a little testimony from one of my neighbors, a young man. He, and he came and, and I stopped him and, 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 and he, says, he says, man, God gave me a dream the other night. And, and, and he says that I was in this dream and, and, and then there was a big dartboard. And every time I threw a dart at it, it would land on the spot that says, start over. He never thought he could start over. But God showed him. And, and he says that the glory of God is shown in his dream. And he just said he lay there speechless. As I heard somebody say today, just speechless. And I told him, do you need anything else? Do you need any other proof? You, church, can start over today. Stand fast the next call word, in the liberty of Christ. And then, cast out. Cast out every imagination and things that exalt himself against God. How many times do you have to cast out? If we do these things and mindful to remind others, we will have the kind of holiness that is 
important, sensitive to sin. That's why God wants to do this thing. Says he wants you to be sensitive to sin. I tell you what, if something's important to you, how many are dressed in your military uh, uniforms and you just walk through the mud as if it's nothing? No. Parrish, that's a beautiful suit, brother. That's a colorful suit, man. Man, I couldn't see you just walking through anywhere. You're you, you walking in the hallway right down the middle straight, uh, as much as you could get in that middle. And when somebody gets get close to you, oh, hold on now, hold on. And yes, I do got a nice car, and I, and I do, okay, I'm at fault, okay. But I do, if you, if you park too close to me, I do get a little sensitive to it. Okay. I do, if I see your car parked a little close to mine, uh, uh, yeah, that, me and Car- Carol parked real close to me one time in the front. I was like, oh, she might hit my car if she opens it, you know. So you see where I'm, Sometimes, you know, and then, but Carol was saying, no, Pastor, you parked too close to my car. <laughs> Woo, sensitive to still. We have to repent quickly. If we, if we love this holiness, I'm coming to the end here. You okay? You guys still okay? You, it helps you to repent quickly. And that's what God wants. Because we're going to sin. All has come short of the glory of God. But the redemption is that you repent. If we confess our sins, he is what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We still have to feel shame, and we still have to have our conscience. Uh, we have to be conscious of the current lifestyle that we're living. We've got to be conscious. What lifestyle are you really living? Okay, you've got to be conscious of that. You've got to, uh, our entertainment, we've got to be conscious of our entertainment that we watch. Our entertainment isn't disconnected with God's holiness. It's like, yeah, that's entertainment, but that's, that's different. I can watch that. No, you are the temple. You are a reflection. You are an image. And our relationship still has to honor God. You want to have somebody in your life and part of your life that's going to honor God. Amen? Because if we do these things, my brothers and sisters, we will still be able to worship Him. We will still be able to praise Him. We will still be able to raise our hands and thank God for saving me. Pastor Pat.